Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will present a short demo using an example CFD problem with special emphasis on various operations in the physics tab of ANSYS Fluent such as activating physical models like energy, defining material properties, copying additional materials from the material database, assigning materials to cell zones, defining boundary conditions and so on. Without further delay, let's get started. Before we begin with ANSYS Fluent, let us get a clear idea of the problem being solved. In this demo, we will simulate the fluid flow through a duct and the associated conjugate heat transfer. Water is flowing through the duct with an inlet velocity of 0.1 meters per second. The temperature of the water at the duct inlet is 10 degrees Celsius. We will assume that the outer walls of the duct are exposed to a cold environment such that the wall temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. We will evaluate the temperature of the water at the outlet in order to assess whether insulation should be added to prevent the water from getting too cold. We will be simulating only half a section of the problem by employing symmetry boundary conditions. Let's now launch ANSYS Fluent. In the launcher panel, you will notice meshing and solution mode. We will select solution, leave the rest of the settings to default and click start to open fluent. Go to file, read, select mesh and pick the mesh file. Once the mesh file is loaded, I will follow the normal procedure of working through the ribbon tabs from left to right starting with the domain tab. First, I will do a mesh check and remember, in mesh check, you just want to look at the output in the console window and make sure that there are no error messages. Here it just says done without any error messages so everything looks good. Next, I want to change the temperature units to Celsius. For this, I will go to units and to quickly find the temperature, I will click on the slider bar and then type T on my keyboard. As you can see, it takes me right to temperature and I can select it. Change the units to Celsius and then click close. Next, I will move over to the physics tab. Each of the ribbon tabs is organized into groups and in the physics tab, I like to work through the groups from left to right because often the entries that you make in items to the left help to determine what entries are required in the panels further to the right. The first group on the left is the solver group. We will keep the default settings in this case and move forward to the models group. In the models group, energy needs to be activated so that the conservation of the energy equation is included when solving the problem and temperature can be computed. Notice how viscous is colored blue which indicates that a turbulence model has been defined and set to the default turbulence model that is SST K omega model. Based on the inlet velocity of 0.1 meters per second and hydraulic diameter of 0.307692 meters of the duct, the Reynolds number is 30621 which indicates the flow is fully turbulent in nature. So including turbulence modeling in our simulation is correct. SSTK Omega is a versatile model and is recommended for most applications. So no changes are required here and I will close the panel. I will continue working from left to right. The next group is materials. Click on the materials button in the ribbon. In the materials panel, you can see that only air is available for fluid and only aluminium for solid. Since water, which is the working fluid for our problem is not available here, let me go to the materials database and copy it. 
Also, since steel is not available for solid, I will copy that too. In the fluent database panel, you can see there is a long list of fluid materials. In the interest of time, I will click on the slider bar and type the first letter of the material I want which in our case is W. It takes us to water and when I click copy, it will transfer water to the materials panel. Now that I am done with the fluent database materials panel, I will click close. You can see that water is now available in the materials panel. It is recommended to set up all the models before defining materials because depending on what models have been activated, different inputs may be required in the materials panel. For example, if the energy equation had not been activated, there would not be any entries for the specific heat and thermal conductivity. I will use the default values of the properties for water for now, but in case you make any modifications, remember to click on change slash create to register the changes. Next, we will define a material for our solid duct that is steel. I will go to the fluent database again and change the material type to solid. Now I will select steel from the list and then click copy to transfer steel to the materials panel. I am done with the fluent database materials panel and will click close and you can see that now steel is available in the materials panel. Select steel and remember to click change slash create to reflect the changes of the material properties if you have made any. But for now, let us keep the default values of properties for steel and click close. Our next group to the right is zones. I will click on cell zones and this will bring up the cell zones conditions task page. As you can see in the task page, we have two zones, one fluid and one solid. Let me first select fluid and then click edit to open the cell zone conditions panel. One thing you should notice here is that air is selected as the material. In the materials panel, you see water is displayed, but in the cell zone conditions panel, it still says air, which is the default material. So what this means is that it is important to assign the material to the appropriate cell zone in the cell zone conditions panel in addition to loading it in through the materials panel. Fluent will use the material in cell zones when the solution is calculated. So I will just change this to water. Click apply and then close the panel. Similarly, we can do the same thing with the solid zone. This time, double click on the solid zone to open the cell zone conditions panel. Select steel for material name in the drop down. Click apply and then close the panel. Next, I will define the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are usually set in the boundary conditions task page which is opened by clicking boundaries in the ribbon. In this video, I will show you an alternative way by using the graphics window through the quick property editor. If I left click on the inlet boundary in the graphics window, this will bring up the quick property editor. This panel includes entries for the most important settings and it is easy to just type the values in the panel. In the panel, you see the boundary condition type which is velocity inlet and the zone name which is inlet. There are also two input fields, one for velocity magnitude and one for temperature. Let me enter here the value of the velocity which is 0.1 meters per second and the value of the temperature that is 10 degree celsius. To verify other inputs at the inlet boundary, click more to open the traditional boundary condition panel for the chosen surface. Then I can safely close the window by clicking the X button on the top right corner to conclude the inlet boundary condition setup. At the outlet, we will keep the default pressure outlet boundary condition. Let's click on the outlet in the graphics window and check that the boundary condition type is set to pressure outlet. 
the pressure is set to 0 pascal and close this window. Let me now left click on this outer surface in the graphics window. At this boundary, I need to define a temperature of 0 degree Celsius. Since this option is not available in the panel by default, I will click on more to open the detailed boundary condition panel. In the thermal tab, I will select temperature, set the value to 0 degree Celsius, click apply and then close. As there are two zones, one solid and one fluid, the walls between the two cell zones are internal. When there is a wall that is an internal boundary, ANSYS Fluent automatically creates a shadow wall zone when the mesh file is read and this can be identified by the name which includes shadow with it. This is done for a two-sided wall as it makes it easier for the solver internally to keep track of the applied boundary conditions on either side of the walls. You see here that we have these three walls and these three shadows. Let us now select the three walls and go to multi-edit for inspecting the default thermal boundary conditions for these walls. We see that the thermal condition is set to coupled. This means that the thermal energy exchange at this boundary will be handled by fluent and we do not need to set anything here. Also, since symmetry boundary conditions do not require any inputs, all the boundary conditions have now been set up and we can move to the solution tab. In the solution tab, we will create report definitions to monitor the solution for pressure and temperature while it is being calculated. Click definition and select new surface report for the area weighted average. We will give a descriptive name and change the variable to static pressure. Select inlet and make sure the report file and report plot are selected. Now I will create another new surface report for mass weighted average and this time for temperature. Give the report a descriptive name and select the variable as static temperature after selecting outlet from the list. Next. I will initialize the solution and then set the number of iterations to 300 and calculate. The solver will iterate until all the equation residuals are reduced below the convergence criteria. The solution converges rapidly and the report plot shows that the pressure and temperature reports are no longer changing with iteration. Now let us go to the results tab. We will go to reports and then fluxes so we can check the mass and energy balances to further ensure the convergence of the problem. In the flux reports panel, I will select the inlet and outlet and you can see the imbalance reported in the net results field is many orders of magnitude lower so there is a very good mass balance. Next, I will select total heat transfer rate to check the energy balance. I will again select inlet, outlet and solid walls and click compute. The value in the net results as compared to the heat transfer rate out of the solid duct is many orders of magnitude lower which is in fact a good energy balance. Now. We will create a path lines graph for visualizing the flow field. For this, click path lines under the mesh group in the ribbon. Click new which will open the path lines panel. Select time under color by and release from the inlet. Click save slash display. You can notice that two relatively large recirculation zones have formed at the corners of the duct and the corners have also induced vortices in the flow. Remember too that there is a symmetry plane, so the vortex that you see here actually belongs to a pair of counter-rotating vortices. Next, for graphics, let us go to contours. Click new and change the variable to static temperature.
select inlet outlet and all the wall shadow pairs from the surfaces list and click save slash display you can see that the fluid temperature field has been affected by the cold temperature on the external wall from the contour plot you can see that the temperature at the outlet is approximately 9 degree celsius the exact value of the temperature at the outlet can be found by opening the temperature report definition in the outline view and then clicking on compute you can see that the outlet temperature is displayed in the console window and is found to be 9.137 degree celsius as we can observe there is no significant drop in the temperature at the outlet due to the cold environment and hence we can infer that no insulation is required so that concludes the workflow demo for the duct tutorial in this demo we have seen how to set up a physics model how to copy additional materials from the database how to assign materials to zones and how to set up boundary conditions using the quick property editor with this we come to the end of our video